what I had from last time. So I, I, will, I will just rewrite the equation, just to give you a quick summary. So we had the theta dot equation, or theta prime equation, which was 1 fourth minus r minus 3 rw minus 2 theta squared minus 2w theta squared plus 6 lambda plus 6 w lambda. And we had the r dot prime equation, which was minus 2 thirds r theta after a bunch of then I found three equilibrium points. So the first equilibrium point corresponded to the case where our theta star was zero. And we saw that that meant these are static universes that do not expand with this. So we have a static solution. And they were in general given by theta star r star is equal to 0, 6 lambda plus w lambda, 1 plus. And then I broke down cases for you where r would be less than greater than or equal to 0. And the important case was when r, r is greater than 0. And these were the so-called Einstein static universes. And so forth for the other. And then I found two more equilibrium points which were, which were just conjugates of each other, the so-called Cicero universe. And these were so equilibrium points two and three. And one was theta star, r star. So these correspond to cases where r star is equal to zero, and these are spatially flat. This is the curvature, which is r in the series of five. And in particular, we had plus square root of three, square root of lambda zero. And then we had theta star r star, which is minus square root of three, square root of lambda. So that's where I left you off. And this solution, because it's plus, theta is plus, is an expanding universe which is the expanding precision. And this is minus, so theta is minus, it's contracting, you have a contracting decision. So that's why I left you off last time, and today we will do the stability analysis. So, I can slash stability. So, the first thing to do is to set up your Jacobian matrix. And the quickest way to do this is to call one F1 and to call the other one F2, as I've been doing. Eventually, you won't need to do that, but just to keep track, it's easier to do that. So then your Jacobian matrix is simply given by partial F1, partial theta, partial F1, partial R, partial F2, Theta, partial F2, partial R. And now you just compute as usual partial derivatives. So, in general, you get the following minus theta, 1 plus W, 
you get one fourth minus one minus three w, you get minus two r over three and minus two. Everybody clear so far? So it's the same thing as usual, just computing partial terms. So now I want to, that's my Jacobian in general. I would like to determine eigenvalues related to each point, as usual. So let's do this. For this model, which are my spatially homogeneous and isotropic solutions, if you remember, that was the assumption we made the sphere, the hyperbola, and the plane. Yes. That is 
is a complication that we do not want for this case because there's some deep physics involved in why that happens. So I'm saving you from the question. So therefore, for this model, all of the static solutions are satisfied. of the stable manifold, of the stable manifold. Uh, one. One. Very good. So, a quick way to write this, if you remember, we denoted our manifold by W, S, W, U, W, C. If you go back to your notes, so a quick way to write this is dim W, S, dimension of stable manifold. What is the dimension of the unstable manifold? One. Very good. W, U. And what is the dimension of the center manifold? Zero. There is no center manifold. And that's real special. I do not want to deal with center manifold. I'll show you why in five minutes. It's very complicated. Okay. And of course, dim of W, C. And what does this mean? It's a nice thing to impress your friends with, but what does it mean? That the dimension, you have essentially two manifolds here. It means the following. It means you have, because you have a one-dimensional stable manifold, where you have a stable manifold to begin with, that means there are some orbit slash solution that are attractive. And if you have also correspondingly an unstable manifold, there are also some solutions that are repelled by this one. So that is the significance of this. In the neighborhood of the point, because remember, we define manifolds in the neighborhood of our equilibrium. So that's what it means. You have a stable and an unstable. Any questions? So that's for one of the equilibrium points. What about my considered universe? What? And I just realized I erased my Jacobian. <laughs> oh no. Okay. That's okay. I can just ask you to recall it. So it's point two. Which was theta star. R star is equal to square root of three. Square root of lambda is zero. The Jacobian, as you can confirm, takes the following form or form. Namely, you get minus root square root of three, one plus w square root of lambda. This stays the same. You get zero here. You get minus two square root of lambda over. And what are the eigenvalues? You get two as you expect. You get lambda one is minus two square root of lambda square root of three. And you get that lambda two is equal to minus square root of three, one plus one square root of three. Okay. Is this a sink source shadow or something else? Why is it a sink source? Just two names. Right. So, clearly, lambda 1 is always less than 3. So, there it is. And lambda 2 will also be always less than 0. If minus 1 is less than w, which is less than minus 1. Even if w is equal to minus 1, which is the special case here, and then therefore lambda 2 is equal to 0. Remember I said 
as long as only one of eigenvalues is zero, you can always look at the signs of the other ones to determine the signal. So even if w is equal to minus one, this will still always be negative. So it's still a signal. Not right. But lambda one is still less than zero, so this is still. What does that mean? So now, the third step is to identify the manifold dimension. So, what is the dimension of the unstable manifold? Zero. Zero. What is the dimension of the stable manifold? And what is the dimension of the center manifold? So it's purely attracting. Jim W S. Two. Jim W U is equal to Jim W C. Which is equal to. So therefore, this point. Since lambda 1 is less than 0, lambda 2 is less than 0. As long as w does not equal this. So there's two ways to determine asymptotic stability. Lyapunov's stability in this one. And all you're required to show is that both or all of your eigenvalues are strictly less than any questions? So it's interesting. We have a bunch of static universe possibilities that are saddled. And we have this expanding state that is asymptotically stable. It's a single one. It's interesting. I wonder what will happen if you look at the spine at the contracting decision. Let's see. As you can imagine, I don't really need to do the computations over. Why is this? I just have to put in minus sign. So just switch the sign. Because you see the calculation is invariant with respect to a minus sign. Because the other point is just minus with three or plus. So if I put a minus here, it will cost me a plus sign. And then therefore I'll get two plus eigenvalues. So this should be point three. I just want to be Out of sheer laziness. So is this a sink source or something? It's a source. Of um, not always, but in this case it turns out to be the case. This is a Hence, it is unstable. And now I will ask you again what is the dimension of the stable manifold? What is the dimension of the center manifold? And what is the dimension of the unstable manifold? So, therefore, because this equilibrium point only has Associated to it is unstable manifold, it is repelled, it repels a little bit. Therefore, repelled. Very cool. So this
this is the first system which we've done, which has a sink, a source, and a set. But for all values of W, no matter what you choose W to be, you'll always have that the saddle universes will be a saddle, and you'll always have the contracting universe as a source, and you always have the expanding universe as a source. So what do we actually have in other discoveries? A very cool thing has emerged from this analysis. We have something that connects a thing, a source, and a cell. What is that called? Does anybody remember? If I have in sequence a source, a saddle, and a thing, Heliotinic orbit or heliotinic sequence? Sequence. Very true. Very true. I think so. Uh, I should erase. I, I, I forgot what order. So I should erase the second one. So I should erase the first one. This happens to me a lot, actually. A lot of students got angry at me in my first year class. So they wrote all this stuff down. And then I had a habit of, I guess, absentmindedly talking to students during the class. And then I went back and I erased what I just wrote. And they were not happy about it. Yeah. That's the same. So, irrespective, of what W is, the point one is always a saddle. Point two is always a sink. And point three is always a source. In other words, what this implies is that you have a heterogenic That connects, remember, so what is the definition of a heterogenic sequence? I kind of just told you. Well, the source and some shadow side. Right. So the source goes to a side of, or maybe you have more than one side. As long as you start with the source, you have a bunch of shadows in between. Them. That's interesting. So I'll explain the significance of this in a second, but now I. Yeah, I kind of do. So, let's do something. So as I said, it, for you, I wrote this up kind of quickly in the car. Well, I, I was not right. <laughs> I was in the obviously. And uh, so to do these numerical solutions, um, you have to pick a value for W. So I just picked, just to start with, Let's just do one third, which corresponds to a universe with radiation, if you remember. So let me get that. And then I got to also draw these equilibrium points as well. Mental is not this. And just to keep it in context, so the different equilibrium points are there. Maybe blue was not as you could, but you can kind of see. So what are the individual points here? So red, just to keep a legend. I forgot the code to actually add a legend to the figure, so I'm writing it by now. The red point is this one. Um, I think I wrote blue is the second point here, which is the same. And green. So there are these are these equilibrium points in the universe or they're different universe? That's what I'm going to talk about. So as you can see, you can clearly see that the red is a saddle point. You have some that are attracting it, some that are repelling it. You can see blue is very clearly a sink of the system.
the mathematica is very weird with some of its orientations of curves, so pretend it's not right. Okay. But as long as you <laughs> notice the, um, the sink and source behavior, green is clearly a source of the system, blue is clearly a source. So if you have these, and look, they're on polar opposites of the phase portion of the sun, just like we expected from the function behavior of the sun. So you definitely have in this system, you have expanding universes that are a future state of the system, starting from some generic contracting state. And you see there's orbits that connect all three points, if it was drawn more better. But you can clearly see a heterogeneous sequence hitting on this. So we can talk about that in two minutes. Because I, I don't want to give you the impression that they're different universes, actually. They're states of one universe. So let's. I should make this point. What is the next step I always do after I finish analyzing the eigenvalues? Even on your review sheet, what is the next thing? I the fourth thing. It's not just a by bifurcation. I cannot do that for this model. And that's Liam's why I didn't want to do lambda z. If you set lambda z equal to zero, you get only center manifold. You get no stable or unstable manifold. All your eigenvalues are different. So this is actually leads to what we know as the solid bifurcation. And they cannot be determined by looking at the chip of energy. That's why it's called the solid. So usually what we've done is we've linearized the system and then we've seen where the Jacobian energy is concerned. In some very highly nonlinear dynamical systems, you cannot do that because the Jacobian is useless. When you set certain parameters to zero, you just get a bunch of zeros. So cannot be determined by Jacobian. But they still are there, and this system in particular has a very specific type of bifurcation, and it's called something actually. These are called the following. The type of bifurcation you get is what is known as the Zolzona token degenerate. I will spare you the details. I will simply ask you to. It's too complicated to cover in this class because it relies on something on what we call center manifold theory. So if you want to look it up out of shameless self promotion, once again, you can look it up in archive and it's 1607.03. Very interesting behavior happens actually in the bifurcation, but it cannot be determined by a linearity. So, what does this mean? I keep calling these equilibrium points universes, but I don't actually mean they are different universes. We still only have one universe. In any dynamical system, though, what do the equilibrium points represent? They represent different states of the system. So this represents different states of one universe as well. It's not that there are different state, the different models. So we have three equilibrium points, which means that this universe, at least under the assumption of the geometry that we are dealing with, the homogeneity, has three distinct states in its evolution. In particular, so it started off in this contracting space, contracting to what? Big Bang. At t is equal to zero, let's say. Then for some interesting thing that we don't understand why, it hit this saddle behavior, which was our static mode. And 
then somehow we ended up where we are today, which is the expanding. So our universe is expanding precisely like that. So our universe has three different epochs in it. Our contracting epoch that goes to the Big Bang, there's some saddle behavior intermediary, and then our final expanding state. And that's where we are now. Um, I, I don't. That's the other key thing. So, um, how we got to Einstein's field equations, how I wrote down the dynamical system, if you remember, I made a bunch of assumptions. The two assumptions I made was that, in general, the model I'm dealing with is spatially homogeneous. And isotropic. But this behavior, depends upon the geometry I assume to start with. It's very specific. I assume that the space-time is homogeneous and isotropic. If I drop one of those assumptions, I get a broader range of that have more equilibrium points, at least 10, 8, 9. Each one of them has a considerable equilibrium. In some of these assumptions, if you drop isotropy, for example, you don't get that the saddle is intermediary. Maybe you get that a static universe is the final state, which is Robert's question. So this, these equilibrium points crucially depend on the assumptions you make. And that's very tricky because nobody knows precisely what the configuration was, was of the very early universe. So I've assumed in some sense that the early universe in my model, or Friedman's model, um, are very clean to begin with. But it's not always the case. Um, ah, but I have data to prove what I do. Oh, he's trying to cut a fire. No. Uh, well, I mean, there's some justification before the thing. Um, and what is our justification? It's the. This is, if, if you look at a radiation map of the night sky, which is a cosmic light in the background, if you also want to find You see, it's kind of a poor picture, I can't find it better. Um, so this is not on the larger scale. If you look roughly at this picture, at very large scale, there is homogeneity and isotropy up to a very high percentage. So there is some justification, a very strong justification actually. And plus, we know that the universe is expanding. So there is just a But as I said, if you drop one of these assumptions, the equations become much more complicated. And in some sense, it must be the case because the early universe you expect to be chaotic and all these types of things. So it's not necessarily a good assumption to assume it's very clean. But that we can talk about. Any any questions on anything about this? Not not what. So if I gave you Einstein's equations, you could solve them. No problem. So expect it on the last question. Until. No, maybe not. Why not? You can do it. I've, you've done this. Why can't you? Maybe for two, we can write down which equation is second. Really? Um, no, I want you to fill that one. But it's good practice. <laughs> it's very good practice. And you say I'm crazy. <laughs> I can say it. But not being enthused at it. Anyway, so I just wanted to say um, you've been a very good class. Um, I thank you for putting up with me and all my <laughs> laziness and jokes. Um, but if you ever need anything in the future, please do not hesitate to email me or contact me or whatever. Um, it was very good. To see. Thank you.